Hey folks, and welcome to the Small Tech Podcast by IFMIF Creative. I'm your host, Raf, and today I'm going to talk to you about one of our favorite tools, Cloudflare. If you enjoy the work that we do, I'd really appreciate it if you hit those like and subscribe buttons, and if you give us a review on your podcast app of choice. We're a tiny team, and every little bit helps, so thanks. So the quick overview of Cloudflare and my background with it is I first started to use it as a way to manage DNS because I'd heard that it was a lot faster and to protect my websites because I'd heard that they were good for preventing DDoS and other types of attacks. I also really liked the fact that you could provision TLS SSL certs at the time when it was a little bit more complicated to do things with Let's Encrypt. Of course, these days, pretty much any platform that you deploy to will either provide managed Let's Encrypt workflows, and it's also just gotten a lot easier to work with Let's Encrypt. So that is less of the value prop for me these days, but there's still plenty of stuff that they do that makes it a lot easier, especially when you're building small products at first to do things right, uh, to keep things safe and to just get started quickly with stuff that otherwise might take a lot more time. So let's dive into it. So here you are looking at the Cloudflare dashboard and we are looking specifically at the chewydemos.com website. This is a domain that we bought basically just to do this sort of thing, to run demos specifically around the Chewy stack, the framework that we're developing, but it's just an empty account at this point. I will first talk to you about the DNS service. The thing that's neat about this is, let's say we're gonna do a CNAME and we're gonna point app to, we don't really have anything real, app, dot example dot com and you'll see we have this thing that says proxy status and here we have it proxied or we can turn that off dns only so let's hit save on that what does that mean basically what happens here normally when you change your dns settings or records this would point to a cname and when a request is made for those dns records that is public so the, the public would know where your CNAME, so app.chewydemos.com, they would note that then points to app.example.com. What Cloudflare does is they proxy it, and so it actually points to something at Cloudflare. It actually, I believe, is just an IPv6 address. And then that request goes through and is forwarded to app.example.com. This is even more useful if you're using an A record. So if you have an A record and you're pointing to, I don't know, I'm just making things up here. Uh, so this might not make any sense at all. But yeah, let's say you point to that IP address. That's, whoops. That is the address of an actual server somewhere on the internet. And so you might want to keep that safe. Of course, security through obscurity is not ideal. So on some level, this IP address is public. Like it is exposed to the internet. That is how the traffic is getting from someone going to newapp.chewydemos.com. The request gets through to Cloudflare. It then gets proxied to this IP address which your server then does something with it, responds with a web page or something along those lines. But at least here, that IP address is initially, it's not listed in your DNS records. At this point, if you have this little orange cloud, it is being hidden by Cloudflare, who then s sends that request through. Now, there is something else that Cloudflare provides where you can have an additional level of security. Like I mentioned, this is security through obscurity, not ideal because this IP address is still public. That in many cases is fine. Let's say you're running a single node VPS somewhere on in, in a cloud provider or some data center, and you've got this IP address tied to the public internet. Depending on what you do with that machine, that might not be ideal. You don't want that public, that IP address to be directly exposed. If you use a managed load balancer from a service who has additional, you could alternatively use something like a load balancer provisioned by AWS or DigitalOcean or whoever else, and they probably have additional security around those endpoints. But if you're running this server yourself, I don't know, do you have the security knowledge to make sure that is isolated and that, that everything is secure? Up to you. Another thing that Cloudflare offers, if you are not comfortable with that, is you can make sure that you do not have a public IP address and you can use 
what they call their tunnels offering, which lives under... Okay, so they have moved some things around, but let me just navigate to that and I will get back to you. Okay, so we are here in this new area, well, relatively new area over the past year or so that Cloudflare has put together called their Zero Trust Suite of Services. So you'll see now that we're under the Ifemaya Creative account, no longer under the domain at ChewyDemos.com. And that's because some of the tools that Cloudflare provides you are at the account level, and some of them are at the domain level, the zone level. And the zero trust tooling is at the account level. So what can we do with zero trust that allows us to protect our IP addresses or to protect our servers and really only allow the traffic that we want through without exposing our server to the public internet? What we have used in the past on a couple projects is Cloudflare tunnels. And so you can install Cloudflare tunnels in a few different ways. If you click add a tunnel, save tunnel, Essentially, what you can do is you then install this on a machine where you're running a service and you can tell it to connect to uh, Cloudflare and essentially it'll create a, a tunnel from the public internet through to your private machine through their service without ever using a public IP address. So if you're running a service on port 80, you're running a, a, a web app on your server and you want to direct traffic from the public internet to this app, but the server is hidden from the internet, there's no public IP address, then you can use Cloudflare tunnels to direct traffic from your domain through to this application. There's a bit more information here about what you need to actually do. We're not gonna do a, a full demo, but essentially that's the idea, is you don't need to expose your server, you can just tunnel through from the public internet to this service running on your machine without actually exposing it, which adds a nice extra level of security. If you are a Kubernetes user, they provide a nice simple setup that's basically a single deployment and a config map and a secret that helps you pass traffic through to a service you might have up and running on Kubernetes. Nice and simple, uh, very easy to get up and running. Okay, I am going to delete that tunnel. And let's talk about something else here in the zero trust section. So let's say you have a service that you have up and running and you want your team to access it. Maybe it's to manage one of your applications or something along those lines, but you want to keep it secure. You already have accounts that you use to manage your team, whether it's Microsoft accounts or Google Workspace or whatever other system you use you probably have a place where you already manage identity for your team. So what you can do if you want to manage access to your applications that you're running internally is you can launch in here, uh, you can go to applications and you can set up your identity provider. So if you're using Google Workspace, if you're using whatever else here, you can connect your systems so that users have to log in through your work accounts before they access an application. So if you go to applications, you can add an application, self-hosted, for example, you can say it is running at this domain, and then you can connect that to your, for example, Google Workspace account and say only people with a Google Workspace account ending in my company's domain uh, can access this application. You can approve and deny specific people, add them to lists and groups. And so that becomes a nice, easy way to make sure that people on your team only have access to the specific tools that you want them to, that you're managing internally without having to rebuild that sort of authorization tooling every single time. And Cloudflare makes it really nice and easy to integrate that stuff into your application development and your workflows. Yeah, that's another one that we've found pretty practical. Now let's get back to the domains for one of my favorite new things that Cloudflare has added recently. Okay, so let's say you have just launched a new app, a simple product that you're just testing out, you're trying to get something up and running and see what people think, and you need to be able to provide some sort of support email or something along those lines, but you don't want to go through the hassle of actually setting up SMTP and I don't know, you don't want to connect your Google workspace to this domain, do all of that sort of stuff. 
So what you can do that makes things very easy is you head over to email routing and in here you can say that, that I want to receive emails at support at chewydemos.com and I'm not going to show you what's in here, but let's say support at ifmicreative.ca. And so I can say that I want to send emails from support at chewydemos.com to support at ifmicreative.ca. And I can very easily just start forwarding emails so that I can receive them there without having to set up proper email services. I find that's a really nice one to get started really fast and not have to worry about, am I actually going to use this domain? Is it actually an email address that I wanna keep a hold of? It's just a nice way to test things out. Uh, and you can add as many as you want basically, and that's all for free, which is cool. So yeah, alrighty. So those are some of the ways that we use Cloudflare and that we really enjoy using Cloudflare. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe on YouTube. Would really appreciate it. Subscribe to the podcast in your podcast app of choice. And please leave us a review. We'd really appreciate it. We would love to hear what you think about all of this stuff. If you use any of these tools or these techniques and what you're building, we'd love to hear about what you're building. So if you want to join me on the podcast and talk about your product, your process, how you've been working with tech and, and different services, we'd love to hear about it. Also, make sure to sign up for our newsletter where we will be sending you tons of great stuff about how to build small tech products. It's going to be videos, blog posts, podcast episodes you may have missed, and other great stuff. So go to smalltechpodcast.com and there's some navigation stuff in there. You should see a link probably in a nav bar at the top maybe elsewhere that should give you a nice little simple form where you can put in your email address and we can stay in touch. So yeah, that's it for this week's episode. We all want to do good in the world. So go out there and build something good, folks. I'll see you next time.